Drake can only aspire to be the performer that Jay-Z is live on stage. And Kanye I mean, can only aspire to be as good as Jay-Z is on stage. And Kendrick, Kendrick and Cole are the only two that I've seen that can probably get to that point. But people don't understand it's levels. All right, this is the second episode of For the Record with Jazzy Lowe. And today I have two very special guests who I admire and respect 100%. Um, my first guest is the, I'm sorry, the Lex Gabrielle, <laughs> uh, a journalist and also the queen of Twitter. Okay, don't play with me. <laughs> second guest is Chris Townsend, AKA the Memphis Moses. Welcome guys, welcome. What's going on, Jazz? Thank you, Thank you for having me. Appreciate for it. real. Y'all doing all right today? Doing good. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Obviously, you guys know today is Hove Talk. Um, I, I've been saving this conversation to have it with some people who are very knowledgeable of Hove's catalog. But before we get to that, um, I do want to talk verses first, though, like, have you guys been following the verses since the very beginning? I mean, we've seen it evolve into something totally different than what it was originally intended for. So what do y'all think about it at this point? I think, let me say, I'm all about people getting their money. I'm all about Black people specifically getting their money. That being said, though, I do hate that the authenticity of the origination of verses has been lost and the commercialization of it, right? Like, don't get me wrong, but I do enjoy, for example, 3-6 and Bonda. I enjoy those groups getting their flowers, getting their shine, being able to pop their stuff on stage from a bigger audience and being on Twitter and seeing younger people who don't know, oh my gosh, that's what that song is simple song. Oh, I don't know they made this beat, da, 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 da. Like, I enjoy that. But at the same time, for those who do not know, the only reason this verse started was because Timbaland was literally on IG Live one night back in 2020, just playing some of his productions. Yeah. While this beat was on his live, playing his productions. And someone finally told him, y'all need to join together and go back, back to back, back to back. And it went on for like two hours. And ever since then, that's what really made the inception of this verse. And so we had... Johnson Austin and Neo. We had the Dream and we had Sean Garrett. Like yeah. just and it was more so people just celebrating their art and really hitting us with some hits. And it wasn't no stage, nothing like that. Yeah. So I'm happy that it's grown to a point where they can capitalize off it and get some money and monetize it. But I do miss the authenticity of you just so happen to be on live and you can't just enjoying just enjoy, exactly just enjoying it. See, also the crazy part about that too is they really set the precedent and changed the precedent of IG Live. Mm -hmm. And IG started trying to make money off of it as well. Mm -hmm. So they were kind of forced to evolve because when they see people, when they got 500,000 people watching a live for four hours straight, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like Erica Badu and Jill Scott, that was an afternoon. I, I, I was kicking it. That was in 2020. That was a, a full afternoon on IG Live. Nice. Then they started cutting off how long you could be on live. Then they started cutting off you being able to play music on live. And you know what I'm saying? And so Maybe like- stepped in, like- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I do miss the authenticity, but that was a time too. Like it was out of necessity. We was literally all at the house. And we was able to highlight, so like the Jante Austin Neo is still my favorite. Same. Really. I was going to ask what your favorites were too. Yeah, definitely that one. Uh, the Badu and Jill Scott is memorable. Uh, I like the E40 and Two Short one too. I didn't even catch that one. Um, the, the most entertaining one though, besides the Memphis one, of course, but uh, was uh, Dipset and, and uh, the Locks. I forgot about that one, I forgot about yeah, that Yeah, I watched that one in real time. That was crazy, yeah. I think my personal favorites were definitely, uh, you said, uh, Dipset versus the Locks, uh, Gucci versus Jeezy, definitely the 361, I feel like I'm real biased. So of course, you know, we're gonna say that, uh, and Brandy versus Monica. 
definitely but you know what we came to talk about um this has been a conversation on 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 social media for i would say the last couple months now on whether or not somebody can even compete against hove and beat hove mm-hmm. um i mean let's just start there do y'all who do you think without us even just saying the particular person that i sent y'all in your mind regardless of what you've seen online who do you think is the best person to go up against him the person in his house walking around him <laughs> and literally <laughs> only her and only her like can't no can't no only rapper stand there with him except for with the exception of maybe one you and, know even, and even and even that one which i'm sure we will get into later it depends what we're talking about yeah really it depends because in my opinion in my opinion, it's it's two or three that can that can stand there and go hit for hit with ho for sure, okay. for sure. You know what I'm saying? But as far as like straight rapping, see, ho didn't sing one hook, then one melody come out. He did it all off a of rap, and not a lot of people can say that. Mm-hmm. I never thought about that because I mean, um, yeah. before we we I'm gonna let you finish, but before we even get to the other person that they're naming, Drake even though he's a different generation, he forget that crossover, he sang. Jay-Z had that crossover and then sing. So that's a great point. But keep there going. would never be another Jay-Z no. because like there can't anymore. You know what I'm saying? He capitalized off of the fact that people was start rapping different. After, after Illmatic came out, people started rapping different. And he took how Nas was rapping and up the ante on that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he did that for 20 years straight. Yeah. You are, and, he, and, it's, and it's also like, y'all know me. Jay-Z my favorite rapper of all time, too. And I'm from Memphis. So that's that in itself should tell you something. Like, I'm from right. Memphis. We got a whole collective of Southern rappers that don't sound like hoes. They don't do the same things as hoes. And I group around that. And I still pick Jay-Z. Yeah. I'm not talking to nobody about nothing. If you can't sell or have your album released on 9 11 and you still went number one, are you kidding me? There's nothing to say. Nobody, nobody can ever outsell him. You know what I'm saying? Like he was the last person selling records. He said the only people moving units is M, Pimp, Juice, and us. <laughs> and he was not lying. Those were the only yeah. ones. The only ones. You're not going to outsell him. You're not gonna get as many grams as him as a rapper because of the game set up right now. Like you just not. Um, you're probably not gonna if we even if we talk ticket sales, I don't even know if you if a lot of people can do that. I don't know if a lot of people can do that. Drake can, Wayne can, but not a whole lot of other people can do that. So, right. And this so I've seen Kendrick, Travis Scott three times. I've seen Kendrick twice, I've seen Wale, and I've seen Drake. I done seen Beyonce, Rihanna. Jay-Z ha- has the best rap concert I have ever been to. I done seen Kendrick three times, actually. Jay-Z, he was 47. It was the 444 tour in wow. 2015. Man, I bet that was crazy. The best rap show I've ever been to. And I, I went to the damn tour three months before that. And if we really talking about performing, let's be clear. He is just like his wife when it comes to performances. They not doing voiceovers. They're not doing no lip singing. It's straight like breath control. They're and artists. Actors. Yeah, I'm, they're true artists. They're artists. When he just, he just uh, posted a video of him a few months ago doing nigga what nigga who. The flow on that song that you got to have to perform it straight through and not mess up a single line. He still got that at 50. That song dropped, what, 20, 30 years ago? Come on now. This is to put it into perspective, okay? Jazz, you know how I feel about Drake. I love Drake. I've been a Drake fan since I heard him on uh, Dedication, on Stun with, with Lil Wayne. Love Drake. He's going to go down as one of the best ever. I didn't seen Drake in concert. Drake can only aspire to be the performer that Jay-Z is live on stage. And Kanye I mean, can only aspire to be as good as Jay-Z is on stage. And Kendrick, Kendrick and Cole are the only two that I've seen that can probably get to that point. But people don't understand, it's levels. 
Like this man, 52. He 52 right now. You know what I'm saying? He like a rock, an old rock and roll star. How do you have multiple number one albums in what three different decades? Let's talk, about it. Yeah. Let's talk about the accolades. 23 Grammys, 83 Grammy nominations, the most ever. Uh, 14 number one albums by the most by a solo artist. The first living solo rapper to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He even has a sports Emmy. I mean, uh, the only rapper to have top 10 hits across four decades, uh, 100 million records sold, uh, first rapper inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. I mean, I could go on all day, but yeah. He is like, I, I, what I've been saying lately is like perspective is so important because I can understand how somebody who didn't grow up with his music like can get it messed up, but it's Googleable. It's, it's very Googleable. <laughs> and like real talk, we respect, what we respect is power and money these days. Just call, call it facts, like what you can see, your tangible success. So a lot of people see him as a businessman, but people don't realize a few things. One, he was a millionaire when, when he, released reasonable doubt let's be clear be he, he was a 26 year old millionaire a street millionaire you know what i'm saying like his we ain't even got time to talk about him and his crew and how they really street legends for, like for real on top of the fact that like like i said like people underestimate the fact that he did it with just rap and no gimmicks we've seen so many come and go and he's still he's still mentioned at the top from 1996 until now he arguably still the best he's like michael jordan but like he can't never his knees ain't gonna go out and you know his voice ain't gonna never go out so as long as he got a voice like he he getting better that's the crazy part he better than he ever been right now at rap. Jay-Z is and will continue to be the standard for a long time like when niggas talk about being oh, the best right. of the best they're like i want to be like jay-z yeah i mean it's it, it's the young niggas that they may say you know i want to be like drake but come on now like that's the common conversation i want to be jay-z yeah, people, man, don't, people don't understand bro they just yeah that the people don't understand the man himself <laughs> said in my favorite jay-z song he opened it up and said and i quote never been a nigga this good for this long this good or this pop, this hot or this strong, with so many different flows, this one for this song, the next time I switch it up, you boys get bit up. Are you kidding me? Think about, I even think about it like this. Some of our favorite producers made their best production and best song with Jay-Z. Think about that, like Just Blaze, Pharrell, Timbaland, all of them, some of their best productions are with Jay-Z. Kanye West. Yeah. If we really talk, if we really want to be about it, some of Kanye West's best beats is with the Jigga Man. Okay? People don't understand. Kanye has eight songs on the blueprint. Eight. He, like, you know what I'm saying? This before, Hov wasn't even trying to hear that man rap. <laughs> he was like, hey, yeah, I just need some high beats. <laughs> and the beats was hot. To this I day, mean, some of his best production. Yep. Producers have whole eras with Jay Z. Timbaland had him on the first half. Then he got to working with Pharrell. Then he got to working with Kanye. Then he was with Just Blaze. Now he with No ID. You feel me? Like people have eras with yeah. Jay Z where they produce some of their best work. People die and beg to get into studio with Jay Z for something songwriting, production, mixing, whatever. It's like a pinnacle if you can work with him. People weren't even necessarily taking live instrumentation and how you can flip a song and transition to a live crowd like that seriously in rap like that on a big stage at that level. And Jay-Z still cares about that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, and you don't really see that too often. People, it's, and for me, it's not just like what he's done as his hits, him rapping, him getting albums. It's what he's been able to unleash for others and put on for others and how other people respect him so much. They only stepped in with their A-plus game. And he's the ultimate student of the game. So <clears throat> I do want to dive into um, who people feel like is the best contender um, for a couple of reasons. 
Um, one, because I guess they, they consider them to be artists from the same era. Two, because like you said, when you look back on who you were hearing on the radio as a kid growing up, mostly it was Wayne, Jay-Z, and Drake. So they feel like Wayne would be the best competitor. Do y'all agree or disagree and why? It depends on what we're talking about. It depends on what we're talking about. If we're talking about club hits, things that's gonna make people go up and really spit some money in, get high to that eye, it's probably gonna be Wayne. If we're talking about, I don't know, different stuff other than just rapping. Yeah, because we're talking crossover hits. What is what is Wayne gonna play after Empire State of Mind? It, 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 and see, that's the thing. Because Wayne, in my opinion, Wayne wouldn't be a good matchup because it's not just rap. You know, Lollipop was a missile, but unfortunately, Lollipop was like his biggest solo hit. That's what I was just about to say. You know what I'm saying? That's the song that pop culture will remember Wayne for as much as he did. He the he the, he the most prolific mixtape artist ever, mm -hmm. rapper. You know what I'm saying? But you got to be a Wayne fan to know that not everybody has heard No Ceilings, even though No Ceilings is crazy, dedication, the drought, all the like people, people might not have heard that, but people have heard H to the Izzo. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and that's the thing, like, it just, it depends on what we're talking about. I forgot who the rapper was, who on Twitter somewhere, it's like a rapper report card. And so he's great. Right. He's great. He's great. Like all the high rappers at the time on creativity, flow, performance, lyricism, all this stuff like that. Let's be clear. Jay Z didn't get like tens all the way across the board. The only person, one of the only people who got tens all the way across the board was Lauren Hill. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we were to break it down into those different categories, all the elements of rap, and do it one by one, certainly there are people who can contend with hope. But when you add that score all the way up, if we do everything, I don't think that there's someone that can. Now, did you guys see the mock list uh, that was going around? Is Now, this was this was actually posted by Timbaland. So I'm assuming, you know, he made this list or maybe consulted between him and Swiss Beats. But I mean, they have the 20 tracks of uh from Hove and Wayne's hits and they got on Wayne's side uh a Millie, Mrs. Officer, uh She Will, How to Love, No Worries, Son Like My Daddy, I'm single, the block is hot, and then it goes on. But I just I feel like I named the biggest ones. Then for Hove, it's got Dead Presidents, uh Girls, 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 Song Cry. Bunny and Clyde. It's over. It's, it's over by the time. It's the over. first time you play a song with Beyonce, it's over. Not even a problem. Niggas and That's from 03. What are we even discussing? What are we even discussing? Am I thinking? You see, you see how when you say it out loud, how it sounds? It don't it sound crazy. Like, wow, it right. sounds crazy. That sounds crazy. First of all, let's also be clear. They did Wayne Bovis because there's plenty different cuts that they could have picked. That would have been better against them Jay Z songs, not one, but being better. Ain't no way in this world or the next one that you gonna <laughs> tell me y'all gonna play She Will against a Jay Z song so, in this century and think it's a competition. That's my issue. So look, and that that brings me to my next point, which is controversial. And let me preface this by saying I love Aubrey Graham. I'm a huge Drake fan. All right, let's get into it. Drake has lots of hit records. Lots of hit records that we know by heart that we can sing along with, but Jay Z has classic records. There you go. Records that have stood the test of time. There, there are forty-five-year-old men who, if they hear "Dead Presidents" right now, they'll start crying. Real talk, you know what I'm saying? Because they was real like hustling today. Yeah. People was hustling to um, um "Can I Live." You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't understand. That man was like making high level hip hop music 30 years ago. On the Joe Budden podcast, they were also bringing up 
uh, the regional part of it, right? Like they said, Wayne, even though he was as big as he as he was in the South, up North, a lot of those songs that we enjoyed didn't hit like that. And the same for Jay-Z down here. Like when you have that conversation with a lot of Southerners, I know that, you know, all of us obviously are, you know, we hip hop heads, we music heads, so we, we've been paying attention. But for the average person that may not be, like you said, a Jay-Z listener, off top, they saying Wayne, period. Yeah, they not, yeah, they, cause they didn't, and you can't be mad at it to a certain extent cause they want to listen in the whole, like they're like, every Southern fan ain't necessarily a hip hop fan. Our music is is proximity, just like the crime is what's, what's around you. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. So I understand that not a lot of people listened to Jay Z, and you have to take that under account too. But a lot of you know it's twenty twenty two, so people don't always discuss stuff that they know something about. Yeah, and my, and my yeah. thing is like I have um, the experience of being a southerner who moves to the East Coast, right? Mm. Now. And also. For example, in Memphis, if you go to the, to the club, to the set, or whatever, not only are you mainly hearing Southern music, you're hearing Memphis-specific music. Wow. Like, we don't even really get into no other region. So it's really Memphis, 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 Like, the whole set, right? Come to the East Coast, I will never forget this. I'm at a party, like a, a gala-like party, and... They playing um public service announcement by Jay Z going up in the club. The club yeah. in the club. They and, yeah. and they do that like we would not do that. We're not playing no fabulous. Oh, baby, they're walking out. We will, we'll walk, we will leave. We will literally <laughs> be like what, what is this? <laughs> No, they didn't play Can I Live on My Birthday in Love. Hello. <laughs> we would literally like tomato, 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 I'm throwing tomatoes like literally. <laughs> Whereas we're they're going up, and because you know I'm a Jay Z fan, I'm going up. Like I, this, my this my job. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's I agree. Like it's definitely got to do with geography. It's got to do with costume. It's got to do with like what are you, where you go the most? What they playing? I gotta get I gotta get my point off because I got something that since we brought up Mr. Drake man, I don't get me wrong. Drake. <laughs> when by the time it's all over with. 10, 20 years from now, Drake will probably be in my top 10 rappers. He probably will. And he'll probably be closer to the top than people want to give him credit for. Yeah. But my biggest critique, because you have to critique your facts. My biggest critique of Mr. Drake is that Aubrey Graham's best reoccurring role is Drake, right? So he knows how to play the game. He knows the way to him. He knows his hits. He knows his audience. So a lot of his albums do not reflect a progression of him as a man. Yes, as a, I've been saying that. He feeds his fan base to the utmost. Which is why, which is yeah. why, so I just looked this up, right? Yes. Good Drake point. has six albums. He's six albums deep. Thank me later. Take care. Nothing was the same. More life. Views. Scorpion. Certified Lover Boy. Jay-Z's first six albums. Reasonable Doubt, In My Lifetime, Volume 1, 2, and 3, The Dynasty, and The Blueprint. The man that Jay-Z was by the time he got to The Blueprint is not the same man that Jay-Z was when he got to Reasonable Doubt. The flows was different. The subject matter was different. The every time. Every single time. It's different. And that's another reason why I, I just don't be taking a whole lot of mess when it comes to him. The versatility that he has, that he has shown in his music, in his subject matter, in his albums, and his production is bar none. The man that Jay Z is on 444, that introspective type stuff, yes. he's able to be vulnerable and still make a bar and still make it. You don't see that with no whole other rappers. Drake is still Drake. Drake is trying to be better than the same thing now. on the last three albums. On the last Drake. three albums. Same thing. His best reoccurring role. So that's another reason why I just really can't, I can't sit up here and just think of anybody that is undoubtedly going to be crazy. And quite frankly, I don't want to. So. So that brings us to the next guy, right? In my opinion. My personal favorite rapper, besides Hov, Kanye West. Okay. I'll g- I was about to be like, who are you talking about? Yeah, okay. Kanye West. That was the person that was named. So, in my opinion, 
And I mean, it's on, they have a full record together. In my opinion, Kanye is the greatest hip hop artist ever, in my opinion. Cause he single-handedly bridged the gap production wise between what was going on in production in the nineties with what Tribe was doing and P Rock and DJ Premier and Allah and Q-Tip was doing to using the same, to utilizing the same technology that people like Pharrell and Timberland who changed the sound of music did okay. and put that together. Like the, 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 the sound of hip hop music is low key Kanye West production in the early to mid 2000s. You and know that's what just, it's also Drake's entire blueprint in the beginning, right? Absolutely, 100%. Like he, Kanye was the next one after Jay-Z who like kind of set the precedent. Like that man was wearing pink polo shirts, like for real, like, like people be like, what is wrong with this dude? Like this man is super weird, but he was rapping about being a regular dude. Well, here's my question. If Kanye was Drake's blueprint, can we, we can say that Jay-Z was Kanye's blueprint? 100%. Yeah, I mean, of course. 100%. Okay. But like, that's that's my beef with social media. And that's why I kind of try to take a step back from the amount of information that I take in. Because like, if you don't live stuff in real time, you can be easily shaped by like a post or like how you feel about a person's personal life or decisions they make or whatever going on in the media. But yeah. it, it's, it's, it's ludicrous. It's crazy to try to discredit someone's like tangible success because you don't like something they said or you don't like them. And Kanye is the last type of hip hop artist that there will ever be like that because he was the last one that sold records before the digital world, before we went fully digital. He was the last one, 51 selling records no more. And Drake, Drake was like two years too late to like really do great with record sales. You know what I'm saying? Two or three years too late. So like Kanye was the last superstar rapper that really got it to icon status just off of making hip hop music. I would have loved to see how Drake would have done physically, but would people really have been saying that's the best part to buy his album? You know, he still I mean, would have been a superstar. He still would have yeah, sold crazy records and stuff. He like still, that. he, he's that still would have did it. But I would have loved for him to be able to have that accolade. Like I too was actually selling records. I wasn't just pushing streams. I was. That's records. why he's breaking all of these streaming records because he's really helping set a precedent mm -hmm. for the type of music that he makes as well. Mm -hmm. um, without getting too deep into it, he's he he streams a lot, but there are white artists who we don't even know who stream just as much as Drake do as well. Yeah. Yeah. So like what he does is very important when you look at like the measurables of music in the future. It's like, hey, if you ain't have 5 billion streams, you ain't a legend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People talk about how these albums be like out streaming Michael Jackson and Thriller and stuff. It's like, bro, Michael Jackson Thriller sold 100 million records and still selling. No streams. You know what I'm saying? With, even if streaming didn't exist, a hundred million records. Wow. You would never sell that Justin Bieber. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like when you think about like what Drake does, he understands that he's playing a different game too, which I'm not mad at him. Because first of all, what he's making is still good. Two, he didn't open up careers for over 50 men and women. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then the, the last topic, um, we're just going to take it on home to Future's tweet. Um, I'm sure y'all saw it a couple of weeks ago. I thought it was a fake tweet, but I, I'm pretty sure it's real where he said, I'm hotter in the streets than Jay-Z. But what so do y'all think? This is the equivalent to LeBron James or not even LeBron, like Giannis saying, I'm hotter in this league than Michael Jordan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, duh, first of all, because, you know what I'm saying, this man is 20 years your senior, almost, and, like, was doing it in a different era than you and stuff. So, like, you one of the biggest 
artists of the 2010s, hip hop artists of the 2010s, you know what I'm saying? Like in the streets, but that's ludicrous. Like he's wrong. First of all, like what streets are you talking about? Hip hop ain't even 50 years old yet. You know what I'm saying? And it's ever expanding. So it's something for everybody. So maybe the same type of people who love Future might not love Jay-Z. As I get older, I love Future even more. And Jay-Z, like I said, is the Michael Jordan rapping to me, but I love Future. You know what I'm saying? Because Future is a prolific artist in his own right. You know what I'm saying? Like, for sure, he's very talented. And I think he really just now tapping into that. So like, I, I appreciate the confidence, but that's like Jaheem said, he hot in these streets to Usher. Like what? Here's my thing about Nevadius. Nevadius. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm not the biggest future fan. Mm. I, I'm, I I don't deny that. I'm one of the people that like I don't have to be a fan of you to still respect what you give to the game. My thing with future is that, in my opinion. <laughs> The vast majority of people who are fans of Future are not necessarily fans of his music, but fans of the lifestyle. Ooh, girl. I wish I had some, uh, some and, <laughs> and, and, and that's his why. Perceived, his perceived lifestyle. Perceived lifestyle. And that's why I just, I, when I saw that statement, I'm like, okay, yeah, your perceived mindset and your perceived ideologies are definitely hot in the street. Like, People, you know, the whole thing, she belongs to the streets, like all that stuff like that. Like that was you. People, people love that about you. You know that, you know what I'm saying? But if we were to talk the actual music, a lot of people don't necessarily have the deep dive on his music that would be necessary for that type of statement to ring true. So if we're talking about future as a person, yeah, future as a person is hiding the street. Yeah, future ideology is hiding the street. Yeah, who future dates and what he says about them, what he doesn't do, but whatever, it's very much hiding the street. If we just talk about future's music, I just don't think that that would be something I would say aloud. Um, Cause I, it's it's not, it's not the same. It's yeah, like, two things can be true at the same time too. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I understand, like, for future fans, that might very well be their reality. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But, like, numbers don't lie. They just don't. And, like, numbers will show that Jay-Z got more fans than future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, them, them record sales don't, I mean, them show sales will tell. I think that, you know, there are a lot of Atlanta artists at this point that, that are dominating the charts everywhere from Gunna to Young Thug to Lil Baby. I feel like all his counterparts have surpassed him in that way. Like the last three years, four years have been owned by Lil Baby, Young Thug, and Gunna. Because they, they don't miss. Gunna and Baby don't miss. And that's why I said it's a young man's sport because the youngins are the ones, of course, it's because, you know, the, the generation after us yeah. is giving them that support because, you know, yeah. they're they eating it up. That's who really looks up to their lifestyle, which is sad, but that's entertainment that they enjoy. But, yeah, I mean, so I wouldn't say he, he's the hottest in the streets right now, but like you said, his name, yes. His lifestyle, yes. And like after a while, we not gonna want to, we gonna age out of that. For sure. You know I'm, 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 I'm never gonna age out of Jay-Z music. I'm never gonna age out of Kanye. I'm never gonna age out of Drake. I'm never gonna age out of that. I'm I have personally aged out of future music, which is probably why I don't necessarily give him as much attention as other people do. Um so at, at the point where, at the point where you get you can't say that you hide in the streets. <laughs> you can't. What, at what level do you say, okay, let me rap about what I'm actually going through at this point in my life. And even though they're not that particular type of artist, which is why I say everybody's not a Jay-Z, it's like, at what point do we get to find out who you really are at your grown-ass man age? 
Well, here's my here's my thing. Here's my spicy thing. It's gonna be something else. I think that that realization that your grown man ass age is a little bit more delayed than it was when Jay Z was rapping. I think that got something to do with it too, because ain't Drake pushing like thirty four, <laughs> like something like that. He'll be thirty five uh, this year. He'll be thirty five this year. Drake is pushing thirty five, right? Yeah, and. He's still making songs like uh, "Get Along Better," which could have been on "Take Care," <laughs> a crisp and thorough almost ten years ago, right? So it's it's like it's different out here. So I I would argue that these men are rapping about exactly what's going on in their lives, and that might be more so, the problem. I honestly, don't mind it. Like, all I was about to say is, like, it's enough space for, it should be, we should allow space for a future to exist. I think because most hip-hop artists are Black, you know what I'm saying? Like, we expect them to have some type of social responsibility about themselves and not just be true artists. Yeah. And I appreciate Future for what he does because he's prolific in his artistry. Like, he's been consistently doing what he's been doing for a long time. He feeds his fan base what they want to hear. Yeah. And like whether what he's saying is socially responsible or acceptable or cool, but first of all, he profits off of this persona that he's created for himself because yeah. now the music is just reinforcing what we all be tweeting and memeing about. I want to push back on that just a little bit because I want to be clarified like what I was saying earlier. Mm. I hate social justice reps. I do. I don't, I don't, I don't like the raps about the protesting. Yeah, and what be going on in the world and what I don't like that. J Cole coming on Miguel's song talking about, you know, police brutality. You know, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it for multiple reasons that we can discuss it another time. So I'm not insinuating that the raps have to be mature or speak to a cause or mission focus. I am insinuating that because a lot of these newer rappers, such as a future, for example, are so heavily tied to the persona that they have created for themselves, Drake is a victim of this as well. They don't necessarily see the need to diversify their content or sometimes their their even the way music sounds. Thank you. That's right. that's that's what I was trying to explain because I don't want it to sound like I'm saying I don't want toxic music anymore. Like no. I don't, because I'm definitely going back to that monster. I'm we definitely know. Going, I, I want to hear it, but I'm saying like just make it presented to us in a different way. No and, and 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 the reason I bring up Jay Z in that is not just because you know he's family and now he got a wife woo. But what I'm saying is even when he was Jigga Man, like grimy, the grimy song still did not sound the same. Thank you. Thank That's you. what I'm getting at. Thank you. That's what I'm getting at. Can I get Which a word? He will never be hot in these streets than Jay-Z. Exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's it just my, can't happen. That's my thesis. That is my thesis. If you want to be, if you want to talk about women being for the streets and you being a rock star, can anyone touch you? Woo -woo, or you. 11 years, by all means. Do it. Do it. But if you got five albums, three of them shouldn't sound the same. Thank you. Your albums are going to sound the same if you, and now, because now I'm going to go off, because now I'm mad. <laughs> Again, we're going, connecting this back to Hove, right? One of the other things that makes Hove Hove is that he is not afraid to allow new good people in the room. That's part of the reason why his sound, his style, his flow, his production has always evolved for the past 30 years. People cannot evolve over three albums if you are only letting you and your homeboys in the room. It's all going to sound the same. I did not like the fact that J. Cole was going platinum with no features. Everyone kept talking about that. And it's like he's going to keep on doing this and make being only producing beats by him, only using the same flows. I know what a J. Cole sound or a J. Cole album is going to sound like. And now. guess what? Who do we just say that about? Future. Future. You know why? Because J. Cole is feeding his fan base. 20 years from now, the only rapper that might be able to look eye to eye with Jay-Z is one that we haven't even mentioned on in this whole thing. 
Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. 